Hello everyone. Let's continue our chapter the flower. Today our topic is the fruit. Let's continue this. Now what is a fruit? A fruit is a ripened ovary. Now after fertilization, the ovary form a fruit. It ripen, get uh, mature and form a fruit. And how vegetables form? Any edible part of plant is vegetable. You can get the vegetable from stem, from leaves, from roots or even as fruit. As you know some vegetables, pumpkin, pea, tomato. These are fruits as these are ripened ovaries. But in case of apple and pear, the condition is slightly different. In these fruits, the ovary is inside the fruit. Ovary doesn't ripen into the fruit. It is the thalamus part. It is the thalamus which ripened into, which changed into a fruit. In pear also. Here ovary is inside the fruit, inside this placid receptacle. Here it is the ovary. The same condition is in the pear. That's why these are called false fruit. These are not true fruits. These are false fruits, apple and pear. Why? Because ovary doesn't ripen into a fruit. Here the thalamus is ripened into a fruit. Thalamus forms the fleshy portion of the fruit which we eat. And the remaining part, the remaining part, ovary, remain here inside it. It is the core ovary, and inside it, there are seeds, ovules which change into the seeds. That's why it is called. These are called false fruits. Now, parts of a fruit. Basically, there are two parts of a fruit. The first one is pericarp, and the other one is seed. Now, pericarp is having three parts: epicarp, the outermost; mesocarp, the Middle one which is fleshy and the endocarp which is hard one which cover the seed inside it. This is the cut section of a mango. In mango fruit you can see, you can uh, see the, the four parts of a fruit is very clearly visible. The pericarp it is the wall of the ovary. Where after fertilization the wall of the ovary it changes into pericarp. In some fruits like papaya and tomato, what happened? The whole of the pericarp is very soft and fleshy, which we mostly and commonly eat. Papaya and tomato. Very soft and fleshy pericarp. Pericarp is containing all these three, all these three layers, epicarp, mesocarp, and epicarp. All these three layers of papaya and tomato fruit are very soft and fleshy. And ovules become seeds, which you find seed in, inside the papaya and tomato. So uh, this is pericarp. And in some plants, uh, okay, let's see what is the, uh, what is the form, uh, type of epicarp, mesocarp, and endocarp. In epicarp, I have the pericarp, it forms from the wall of the ovary and it is thin and thick, depend on the type of the fruit. Yeah, the pericarp is thin or thick, as in papaya and tomato, it is very soft and fleshy. While in gram, it is very dry. Pericarp is very dry. Now, epicarp, it is the outer thin protective covering. Mesocarp, it is the sweet, fleshy part of inside, middle layer, which is the edible middle layer of the fruit. And after that, endocarp. Endocarp is the inside layer, the innermost layer, which is hard part and it contains in, inside it this sheet. The second part of the fruit sheet is contained or enclosed within the endocarp. Now, fleshy fruits. You have seen some fleshy fruits. Tomato and papaya, as I have told you, the whole of the pericarp, containing, uh, including peric, epicarp, mesocarp, endocarp, the whole of the fruit is very soft and fleshy. So, these are fleshy fruits. But in case of mango, cherry, and palm, epicarp and mesocarp, epi and mesocarp are fleshy, but the endocarp is hard. It enclosed seed inside it. In case of mango and cherry. And in dry fruits, there are two examples by which I will explain you dry fruits, pea pod and walnut. In pea pod, the pericarp is the upper pod. It is upper pod. It is not a non-edible part of the um, pea pod. And pea is the 
inside seed which is edible. It is the uh, an inside portion seed which is edible. Same in the walnut. In walnut, the upper the upper covering is perica, which is hard and not not edible. And inside it, the seed is there which is edible. This is the difference between fleshy fruit and dry fruits. Now functions of the fruit. Why fruit is needed in a plant? See, fruits are mostly needed as they protect the seed from the unfavorable conditions. From the unfavorable environmental condition, unfavorable conditions as well. animals can eat the fruits. So uh, during this time, uh, seed should be covered or should be protected inside the fruit covering. That's why uh, this one is the uh, one uh, most important function of a fruit. Here seeds are enclosed within the fruit. Here seeds are enclosed within the fruit. So they are protected here inside it. And the second one, fruits, stored food, fruits are uh, soft, fleshy fruits which human being, animal can eat. Okay, so fruits are stored food and also a plant, uh, even seed also use this fruit in unfavorable condition as it get food and moisture from it to germination or germination. And third one, fruits help in dispersal of seeds. As human being and animals feed on the fruit, they will take the fruit from one place to another place and that's so in this way they help in dispersal of the seed and um, dispersal of the species from one place to another place. And also this facilitates the germination as I have told you. The seed is also germinate in unfavorable condition also with the help of this fleshy portion uh, which is remain outside it with the help of it. In this way the whole of the chapter of the fruit has finished. Now in next video we will take the seed, types of seed and structure of seed. Thanks for watching.